Hey, it's me, Martijn, and today we take a look at S-Cute's City e-bike, the Wayfarer. So let's get started. On this channel, we've reviewed many e-bikes, of which the majority are basically mountain bikes or foldable ones, but they never look like a real city bike, or as we say in the Netherlands, a normal bike. So when S-Cute as cute, sorry, reached out to me and asked if I wanted to test out and review their Wayfarer, I said yes. As cute is a relatively new brand in the competitive e-bikes market. They have two models for now, a mountain bike and a city version with both different types of motors. We're taking a look over here at the Wayfarer model with the motor in the rear hub and it usually starts just a little under a thousand euros and it arrived in this huge box. After opening the box, removing all the protective foam, cable binders and carton, it's time to assemble the bike. Now luckily the bike is already pre-assembled for almost 90%. We just have to install the steering wheel ourselves with the included hex keys and four bolts. Then it's time to install the kickstand, followed by the pedals, and insert the front wheel, which is easily tightly secured and installed all within 5 to 10 minutes after opening the box. Last but not least is to insert the saddle. This model has all the bells and whistles that you expect from a city bike. It has for example 28 inch wheels, mechanical disc brakes that are 160 mm, a trip computer on the steering wheel with five different pedal assist levels and all is powered by a 250 watt motor in the rear hub. The gears are from Shimano, the battery is easily removable and is a temp amp hours one and if installed, the bike is around 25 kilograms. One of the reasons why I said yes to as cute is that this bike looks a lot like all the other e-bikes that are very common over here. So it blends in super easy and well. I also like the position of the battery because it's super handy and easy to remove and is nicely integrated in the frame. Mine doesn't rattle over normal roads, but the bike is more noisy when we're on non-asphalt roads. The bike rack looks really sturdy, but it can only handle up to 25 kilograms. So taking someone on the rear of your bike is not advised. And to my surprise, they did not include branded shock absorbers, but they did go for a branded chain by KMC that is rust proof. And in terms of safety, I really like what SQ did by including two reflectors between the spokes on each wheel, a taillight that also has reflectors right next to it, and a strong front light. Let's quickly discuss the speed, the range and braking. The maximum speed is 25 km an hour and the 36 volt 250 watt motor reaches that easily. I like that the motor is quiet and it gets you up to speed quickly too. We don't have any hills over here, but the bike is able to take some bridges pretty easily if you pedal along or if you arrive with some speed to continue using the full electric mode. Steeper bridges will require that you pedal along. And in terms of braking, if you go the maximum speed of 25 km an hour, the braking distance is a bit long, usually a little over 6 meters. Just be careful when you brake or if you have to brake in an emergency. Regarding the reins, this is heavily influenced by your weight, the road conditions, the weather. And with my 80 kg on the Dutch bike roads and with normal weather conditions, I usually get around 45 km of range, which is a lot less than what is stated on the marketing materials. I do believe that you can push it all the way to the nearly 60 to 80 kilometers of range that they give you if you make longer commutes rather than short ones and if you bike often above 25 kilometers an hour as then the motor stops supporting you. The display on the steering wheel is quite basic but it provides you all the information that you need. It shows you the five pedal assist levels, zero meaning the throttle can be used and one to five are the pedal assist levels. In the top left is the battery indicator with five bars and whenever it starts flashing the last one it is critical to charge it. And speaking about charging the battery, this takes nearly seven hours. Bottom line, there are many things to like, of which I like one definitely the most and that is the design, but also the build quality. It looks so nice and like a typical Dutch bike that it blends in nicely. 
The weld looks superb, the paint job too, and the overall size is great for my body posture and size. A throttle can be installed yourself and is included in the box, uh, because it's in some countries illegal to use, so that's definitely a nice bonus from s -Cute. The unbranded sock absorber is surprisingly good, and last but not least, the possibility to use the bike without the battery. And it's good to know that you can take the battery out and charge it indoors too. There's basically only one thing that I don't really like and that's the saddle. The saddle is really stiff and hard. I'm currently looking at other saddles on the internet that are softer and more comfortable for longer rides. Other than that, I am definitely surprised, positively surprised by what you get for what they're asking for this bicycle. And if you want to know the current price, check out the link in the video's description. What's also interesting to know is that there is a pro model available where the hub motor is in the center of the bike which is even more comfortable than this one so definitely go check it out after watching this video. And that's basically it for this video. If you want to know something specific or if you have any questions drop them down below because I would love to help you out. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe so that we see each other in the next one.